on the back end of a back-to-back, -back, the Dallas Mavericks lose 127-134 to to the Indiana Pacers in a game that wasn't as bad as many people would lead you to believe. Yes, we still lost the game. We're now 4-3. and three. Not where Mavericks fans want to be right now, but there are some things to look at that were positive that we can definitely highlight in this video as we break down the box score, break down what worked and what didn't work, and how can we adjust from this, as well as we do have an update on Derek Lively's injury. But how's it going, everybody? My name is Marcel Martin. This is Mavericks Digest, bringing you the latest news on everything Mavericks related. And before we get started with today's video, we're currently sitting at 14,212 subscribers, getting very close to that goal of 15K. But if you want to be up to date on everything Mavericks related, the live streams, the watch alongs, the giveaways, the news vids, and everything else in between, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on a single thing that we do. But, like I said in the intro, this game wasn't as bad as many people would lead you to believe. Yes, we did still lose to the Indiana Pacers, but the Indiana Pacers aren't a bad team. Yes, they were 2-4 and four before this game, now they're 3-4, and four, so yes, they are still a sub-500 team, but their offense is still one of the best offenses in the league. I mean, 134-127, to 127, that's a high-scoring game. Even in today's standards, that's still a high-scoring game. Even for us, the Dallas Mavericks, that is a high-scoring game. And we all know that the Pacers play with pace, so we had to play up to their pace, which we didn't do when the game started. At one point, we were down 2-15 to 15 in the first quarter because we did not, again, we did not come out this game with the right energy. We did not match their pace. The Dallas Mavericks love to slow the game down. They like to force their opponents to play to their pace as we love to play slow. That's how we beat them down. But that didn't work today as the Pacers were just shooting the ball. They were just lights out, pushing the ball up and down the court, and we had to match that. And by the time we did match that, things were looking good. We were able to keep up with them. It never really got away from us. They never had an, a crazy lead after the first quarter. But it just wasn't enough as in the fourth quarter, as both teams are going shot for shot, stop for stop. It really came down to who was going to get more stops first and who was going to miss first. The Dallas Mavericks missed first and the Indiana Pacers got more stops first. So that's really how it went down. But there are good things to talk about. As Najee Marshall had a great game. Klay Thompson had a bounce back game. He was 50% from the floor, 50% from three. Kyrie Irving had a rough start, but he finished out very well. There are good things to talk about. Let's go ahead and look at this box score, right? For P.J. Washington, he had 8 points, 3 blocks, 11 rebounds. He was 0 of 5 from 3, 2 of 4 from the free throw line, and 3, of 3 for 11 from the field. And that's just not good. Now, I understand without Derek Lively, we had to play more small ball lineups, especially with the Pacers in general. You have to play more small ball. And we've seen parts and little spurts of it this season with P.J. at the P.J. at the 5, where that does work. And obviously without Derek Lively, Gafford's minutes were split with Dwight Powell, which I'm surprised we didn't just play more Daniel Gafford. But when you watch the game, you saw how Miles Turner was just eating Daniel Gafford alive. And if you look at Daniel Gafford's stat line. He had eight points, four rebounds. He was two or two from the free throw line, three or three from the floor. So offensively, Daniel Gafford was great. Didn't miss, didn't miss a single shot. But he was allowing a lot of points at the at, at the rim as the as the Indiana Pacers were able to just attack the basket at will. Miles Turner was just owning the paint, and it always feels like Miles Turner has a great game against us. And so that's why we played more P.J. Washington at the five. Unfortunately, that offensively, it was fine. I mean, I'm sorry, defensively, that was fine. P.J. at the five defensively, I'm all for it. But tonight was just not P.J.'s night. I don't think this is very, very much his, his brand of basketball. I don't think this is who P.J. Washington really is. He had a weird start to the season. He caught rhythm, and he had a bad night. I don't expect P.J. Washington to continue to have these bad scoring nights. But let's make sure he doesn't continue to have these bad scoring nights. The defense was there. He had three blocks and 11 rebounds. I'm all for it. Just sometimes I wish he passed the ball because a lot of these shots definitely could have helped us on the offensive end. But continuing with the box score, Kyrie Irving had a very weird start to the game. He didn't look too good, but he definitely picked it up in the second half and had an amazing game. Had 27 points, 4 assists, 5 rebounds. He was 2 of 2 from the free throw line, 3 of 7 from 3, and 11 of 21 from the field. And I'm all for it. Kyrie Irving, we all know he's fourth quarter Kai. That's typically when he gets things going in the second half. And I'm all for it. Definitely want to see a little bit of a better start from him, but I'm all good with it. And Luka Doncic, the man of the hour, the guy that we definitely got to talk about, who played 42 minutes today, definitely came out hot. He was able to get to the free throw line, help help this build a rhythm. But over the stretch of the game, in my opinion, this wasn't Luka Doncic's best game. If I told you Luka Doncic had 34 points, only two turnovers, with two steals, 15 assists, and seven rebounds, you would argue that was a great game by Luka Doncic. 
But when you look at his efficiency, that's the only issue. Now, being 12 of 15 from the from the free throw line is amazing. I'm glad Luca Luca was able to get to the line, get the points that we needed because we were in a deficit. Four of 10 from three, I'm totally fine. But nine of 24, that's pretty bad. Nine of 24 from the field is pretty bad. Um, Luka Doncic in the in the Orlando game yesterday, I thought he really found his rhythm. I thought he was getting getting things going, getting out that slump, all for it. Tonight's game, it was, I mean, it's hard to really tell. Did Luka Doncic have a bad game? I'm not saying he had a bad game. But at least from just an efficiency standpoint, I want to see Luka shoot a little bit better. If you're going to take 22, 24 shots, can you make like half of those? Like that, Like those are a lot of misses. Those are a lot of misses. But I'm not saying Luka had a bad game. I'm not saying we lost because of Luka. Honestly, Luka with 34 points, we needed those 34 points. If they could be more efficient, that's the difference maker. Just like how P.J. Washington, if you're going to play great defense, can you have a little bit of a more efficient offensive game? Obviously, take the shots. I don't want to see guys too scared to shoot. Just try and get a better look. So all in all, I'm not too upset with Luka's game. Just want to be more efficient. That's all. I think he's really getting there because 15 assists is amazing. The one thing that a lot of people harp on is Luka doesn't pass the ball. 15 assists right there, I'm all for it. And seven rebounds, I'm cool with it. He played Thompson, definitely had a bounce back game. Didn't really play the best in Orlando. I felt like we didn't utilize him enough. I didn't think that the team got him the ball enough. But this game, it was different. He finished with 16 points, had three assists, two rebounds, was four of eight from the field. I'm sorry, four of eight from three and six of 12 from the field. 50% right down the middle. I'll take that any night. And off the bench, Najee Marshall had an amazing game. Finally, a great game from Najee. And I'd argue the last two games that we had, Najee was really starting to find his role, really starting to find his rhythm and find out where he fits in this team. But tonight, it all came together. He had 20 points, one steal, six assists, five rebounds. He was two of two from the free throw line, two of two from three, and eight of nine from the floor. Almost 100% all around. Great game from Najee Marshall, the knife, the Swiss Army knife, doing all the little things that we need. And I'm glad that he was able to rise to the occasion. Dwight Powell in seven minutes gave you absolutely nothing. But going down the line, you got Spencer Dinwiddie, who had a great game. He's He's had kind of an up and down start to the season, but I'll take this game. He had 14 points, one assist, three rebounds. He was two of three from three, six of eight from the field. I'll take it every day. And Quentin Grimes, still trying to find his rhythm, still trying to find his role. Didn't really do much of anything. He had one steal, one rebound. He missed one shot that he took, but that was only that, but that was the only shot he took. I think Quentin Grimes is going to take a little bit more time for him to get things going than Najee. Najee was able to get his rhythm. He's starting to find his role. Klay Thompson from the jump, he knows his role. As soon as Quentin Grimes get things going, I think this team's going to be in a much better spot. But it's all going to take time. But even though we lost, and even though I think this was a winnable game, it just it all comes down to those very fine details on why we lost. There was one player who stood up, stood above everyone else that definitely stood on business and i believe the player who stood on business tonight was Najee marshall again putting up 20 points six assists five rebounds was two of two from the three-point line eight of nine from the field was doing everything that we asked of him he was pushing the ball moving the ball setting screens hitting his shots attacking the basket if we can get this maybe not to the same quality but if we can get a similar production from Najee on a nightly basis i think that fixes our bench a lot and then if Derek lively was playing we definitely win this game but a few things that I do want to go over really quick, just highlighting Najee Marshall, 20 points, 5 rebounds, 6 assists, 1 steal, 89 from the field, 2 of 2 from 3, was a plus 5, balled out despite the loss. Shout out to the knife, Najee Marshall, getting it done, doing all the things that we're asking him. But another thing I want you all to take a look at right here, this is from Noah Weber. Um, Luka Doncic on tonight's loss to the Pacers, he said, I think our defense was bad tonight. I think we played great defense yesterday. You know, we kind of let it go tonight. There was a lot of pace in this game, so it was hard for a back-to-back. And the defense was definitely horrible. There were so many times you would see the Pacers just attack the basket, and they're just getting easy layups, easy layups. They were able to get so many points in the paint that I was really worried. Do we even have a rim protector? Is anyone down low to stop? Many times, Jason Kidd would pull a zone defense, and either they would attack the basket, or there's Miles Turner for a three, or there's someone open for a three. There was always someone open for a three when we went to a zone defense. Jason Kidd? Needs to step it up. I was trying to hold back my criticism of Jason Kidd, but I will admit he's got to step it up. He's got to be able to outsmart these other teams, outsmart these coaches. You have an amazing team, and they need you to be an amazing coach. But just to highlight how bad our defense was, this right here. Uh, the Mavs allowed 58 points in the paint against the Rockets most this season. 46 to Utah, the next highest. With 7 minutes and 58 seconds left in the game, the Pacers had 62 points in the paint. 
I really hope we don't have another game like that. 62 points in the paint, and that wasn't all from Miles Turner. That was from literally everybody on the page. They were just attacking the basket. So our defense definitely has to step it up. But as far as Derek Lively, because a lot of people were worried, where is Derek Lively? Well, before the game, he was taking corner threes. He was warming up. And we got this report early before the game started. That first, breaking Derek Lively, the second, right shoulder sprain is out for tonight's game. And the update was Derek Lively suffered the injury during his pregame warm-up. And that's all the news that we have that on right now. Not sure how much time he's going to miss. He didn't play tonight's game. They're off tomorrow, but they're back on Wednesday. So... Who knows? We definitely want to see D-Live back. I'm pretty sure he just tweaked it. I don't think it's something too serious, but you don't want to aggravate it any worse. But we're there. We're 4-3. and three. We're going to keep fighting. We're going to keep winning, and it's going to happen. The Mavericks, they have it. They have the right formula. They just have to execute. But that's all I got for you guys today. Thanks for making this far to the video. Make sure you go to Twitter and Discord. Links in the description below. Consider becoming a channel member. We are doing a giveaway every single month. We forgot to do it this game, but we're going to do it in the Wednesday game against Chicago. We will announce the winners live at halftime. I apologize. Totally forgot today. But if you want to enter our giveaways, all you have to do is become a channel member of any tier, and you're automatically entered. But until next time, y'all take care. Drink water. Peace.